Welcome to the Yaoi Shelf. Pull up a chair and let's get into it. Is that You've had an hour of preamble. We're gonna get and you still managed to fuck it up on the We're entry. We're keeping that. I have, so I have spent an hour softening you up and you've still managed to clinch up around me. And I am disappointed in you. I have been held hostage for a legal human hour. <laughs> and you still manage to fumble right at the end zone. Good lord. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, man. oh my so god. <laughs> what am I doing here? Oh my gosh, I'm like, I can't. Oh, I can't. I have to take my glasses off because. I'm tears. Whew. Okay. Oh man, that was. I turned. Oh, I turned on gosh. a lamp for you. I have on three lamps right now, so I don't look like just boobs and teeth. Because that happens sometimes. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was. Yeah, I'm definitely. Oh, I'm my. leaving that in. So. <clears throat> you better. So hey y'all. So what are we talking about? Oh, we should we should yes, say hi and introduce yes, yes, yes. ourselves. That's in, that's yes. what the outline says. <laughs> so hey y'all. Um, I mean, by this point, honestly, like, if what is this episode five? Like, if you, I mean, it's just it's proper podcasting oh. because you have to assume that for every person, this could be their first okay. episode. If this is your first episode and you're going in dry, firstly, I apologize. <laughs> We we suggest that maybe go back to the first episode and get that get lubed up and then come back to this. I mean, go ahead and finish <laughs> out this session. You're already here. True, true. You might as well. So you're already here. You know, let's let's not let's not scare anyone away. We need that, that is ad revenue. True. Revenue. So if um, you are new here, so while, so, yeah. So if you are new here, uh, my name is Amanda, also known as Aichi Yume. <laughs> Uh, we've been doing this for five episodes, but it feels yes. like it's been a thousand years. <laughs> and uh, so my name is Aisha, a.k.a. Mama Loves Manga. And um, that <laughs> that's all I have to say. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is. This is supposed to be the episode where that we're most excited yes. about because this is literally, I think the, re I think this is the hook that got. When I mm -hmm, pitched mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. to Asia, I think this is what got my foot yes. in the door. If I'm, it if is I'm because um, the fact that we both stand this woman, you know, it's it's that's mm -hmm. I'm easy to bond with. If you love Fumi Yoshinaga, we're probably gonna be friends. Um, I mean, that's yeah. that's a given. I say that that is not an invitation for any of y'all to like start asking me for my number and stuff. Like, don't, don't, like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, do don't be weird. You can have my number, <laughs> but don't be weird. If you're if you're a legal consenting adult over the age of twenty five, you can have ooh, my number. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> y'all can't see me, but I'm I'm moving my shoulders. I'm sh doing a little. Doing a little shimmy. <laughs> Lord have mercy, I'm exhausted. So, um, like we said, we're talking today. We're talking about Fumi Yoshinaka. We are yeah. actually very excited. I mean, I've been mm -hmm. basically like mentioning her in every single episode to this up to this point in some sh way, shape, or form. Right. And Amanda was finally right. like, "Okay, okay, girl, we'll just go ahead and make episode five. <laughs> This. Well, and I mean, I'm not 
fully held hostage in this because I also do stand. This standing is mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. two way street. Um, I think my standing has cooled a mm. little bit over the mm-hmm. last few years, only because I think like there was a couple of titles that didn't hit me as hard mm-hmm, as I felt mm-hmm. like they should have. Um, which does not mean that they're bad. We'll yeah, probably talk yeah. about that a little bit. Um, but I mean, if you go back to episode one, I obviously mm-hmm, mentioned mm-hmm. Antique Bakery is like one of the formative series for me that means a lot to me, and that's all Fumi Oshinaga. So here's where I cover my ass mm-hmm. and Aisha's ass, where I say we're not here to give you a biography. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Google, because <laughs> like, yeah. Amanda actually she did text me and was like, hey, so is this gonna be like just like a fangirl session or is this gonna be like um researched you know giving a an autobiography mm-hmm. basically and i was like you know what no nah, right. we're just gonna we're just gonna fan we're just gonna fan because i'm lazy if i were an animal crossing villager i would be a lazy villager you know like that would be me running around talking about food and not wanting to do nothing okay so i was like i don't really want to do that research and I know that honestly, Amanda, you probably would have if I had said that I wanted that, but I wasn't gonna make you do that. I would have. You already do enough with the outlining and stuff, so I was like, nah. Well, so okay, so in lieu of a full biography, I think that there are some things mm-hmm. that we can give our audience yes. that I think are important. Starting with one is that. Yoshinaga Sensei, as I will be referring to her as because I am a weed <laughs> and I refer to these things correctly, uh, <clears throat> is mm-hmm. older. Is an mm-hmm. older mangaka. Exact age I don't have because that's yeah. not my place, but has been in this game for a right. minute. As mentioned again, mm-hmm. is female. Mm-hmm. As most yaoi mm-hmm. mangaka are. Well, she's also done Yeah, she other. has she's done other stuff. I, again, I, I'm, I have all of her works that are released in English. Because I'm a stan. But, of course, we are only going to be talking yeah. about her BL specifically, I guess, in this. Because this is a yaoi <sighs> podcast. I mentioned one that isn't technically a BL, but it's because yeah. it's one of my favorites. So I'm cheating. I mentioned one that technically right. isn't BL, but it's a master class. And I think everyone who says they like manga needs yeah, to read it. Fun. I'm getting ahead of myself. And also, three is Yoshinaga Sensei is hilariously mm-hmm, self-aware. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And is, I think, probably her own biggest fan. I would fan. agree with that. Which, I think that's why I love, one of the things I love about her work so much is how she definitely pokes fun at herself. She loves she loves mm-hmm. what she does. She loves what she does, but she also can yes. poke fun at it. Yes. And she realizes how ridiculous some of the things are. And I, I love mm-hmm. a person who doesn't take themselves too seriously. Like, they take themselves seriously. Right. Like they, But they don't at the same time. I just, I really appreciate that about her, that she doesn't seem to take herself too seriously, but she does, mm-hmm. but she does put effort into her works. Like, I don't think she's lazy. Like oh, she, yeah. I don't think anyone could mm-hmm. call her a lazy storyteller or, you I don't think she, lazy is not the word that I would use. Uh, I, I wouldn't. Okay, it's on the okay. Manga. Well, yeah, okay. There are some that didn't hit for me. Um, I know, <laughs> but I don't even know if that's lazy storytelling as much as like I just didn't like the things that she chose to do. <laughs> the. W- so, so the word that often comes to mind to me is contrived. Okay, yeah, that, I, which, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. contrived. And also, it's that issue that I have a lot of things that it's like, there's a better version of mm-hmm. this somewhere else. I can see that. That I will, yeah. Like, th- like this is, and even just like within her own work, like, I'm really jumping mm. the gun, uh, but I'll get into that in a little bit, but, um. Like there's actually on my mm. like and dislike there's two there's a series set of that where it's like you just did this better somewhere else. Right. Okay. Like it's not bad. This isn't bad, but you like literally just did this right. better in right. another manga. So Right. That's kind of where I am with it. Um and I and I say contrived lovingly because obviously mm-hmm, I do mm-hmm. stand. Like I say that as a writer and as someone who's been reading her work since 
I was too young right. to be reading this work. Right. Um, so, but and also what's amazing about Yoshinaga Sensei is that again, like this is a long and diverse mm-hmm. career, full of uh, men with very very large <laughs> chins. She, she do does, like them chins. The jetty, like they're, and she has made. I feel like she's made jokes about that in her, like, yeah. I've, oh, like, she has. It's. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I've definitely seen it. Like, she definitely makes fun of. Like, even it, but this is not BL, but Oku is one of my favorite series of all time, and um, she even puts little like jokes in there about the fact that some of her characters, same face, you know, and like there'll be different characters. But they look the exact same. And it's... She has some of the worst same face yes. syndrome I have ever seen in a mangaka. But, cl- okay, it's Clamso, like, too. Like, because... Yeah, well, and that's why I yeah, said cause, some of. Because they a lot. <laughs> that list, that list right. is not short. <laughs> but... <laughs> that list mm-hmm. ain't short. But, um... She has a lot of the same face. Yes. That's like, okay, it's, that's, that's right. just Ono. And I think that, um, I will say, and this is probably, I haven't, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't have the outline pulled up, so I have no idea what order I'm supposed to be, I forgot to pull it up. If you, oh my gosh, <laughs> you have the audacity to correct me lovingly before we start recording. Because I have mispronounced your name, and you are going to look me dead ass in the eye and tell me that you don't have the I outline. I appreciate your work. I I do appreciate you, and I do appreciate your work. I know you do. <laughs> I don't need you to tell me. I need you to have the outline. <laughs> I don't need your validation. I need your preparation. So, ooh, okay. So Dance let me mom. look at this before I start talking. And oh my um. God. Oh my you god. Know, getting too far into whatever it was. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, I definitely was jumping the gun. So what we're we're gonna go back. So ignore what I just said. I'm not gonna I may or may not edit this out. I don't know. But um so <laughs> My outline is in asunder. <laughs> My outline has been murdered. <laughs> it is dead. It lies bleeding I'm on the like, floor. Fuck your outline. <laughs> like, what is My outline has been <laughs> fucked. It is not happy. Oh no. Okay. Whew. Okay. So. Oh, oh, see, and like you legit even had the intro written out for me. I'm. <laughs> yes. I have it written out on top of every outline because it's different if you if I let you just do it. I will no longer accept being called Uke. I am clearly doing all of the work. Oh my gosh, I'm exposing myself. Exposed. I will never I will never again accept you calling me. I mean, Uke. honestly at this point, I can't even argue with that. You <laughs> I'm, I wish I'm, you I'm, would. I am taking my own daddy card away from myself. Because it just, Good I don't Lord. deserve it. I honestly, I don't. I I will wear the, I will I wear the these, hat. I write out these nice outlines <laughs> for you. I leave you space that you never fill in. <laughs> that is. That I, you never I fill know. in. Okay, I'm going to be better. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't you fucking lie to my face. <laughs> Don't you sit here and look me in the eye and lie to me? No, you won't. I might surprise you, so. That's no. No. So. The only surprise you've given me is that apparently you're a deviant oh, furry. That's the only surprise and that's, I've that's gotten. That's just getting worse. Okay, you know what? We're. I, okay, I've already derailed enough. So. <clears throat> Go yes, so we're just have. gonna scratch what I was saying, and um, we are going to let Amanda continue to give her little, <laughs> little bullet points before we get into the actual thing that's on the outline. <laughs> it 
If you come for my bullet points, <laughs> I'm going. How dare you? I am trying to mitigate our mutual anxieties because you said that having an outline helps you stay on track as you run a train over my outline. <laughs> Miss. Good <laughs> lord. I'm trying to drag my oh, bullet points. Uh, the only thing keeping this show on the track. God damn I'm it. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Where are we? Um, you were saying, we were talking uh, about Fumi Yoshinaga. Um, which yes, we, we probably were. skipped. We should just... Let's just, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and talk about our favorite what? series. Uh, Amanda, you go yeah. first. It's, it's already been a long night. <laughs> it's already been a long night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. We were so excited about this episode. Just, it's a train wreck. It's this. <laughs> oh, God. Just like a Fumi Yoshinaga oh, protagonist mm-hmm, life. Mm-hmm. I brought it back. All right. So, favorite series. Uh, I mean, if I don't start with Antique Bakery, I'm a whore and a liar. (laughs) I think it's just one of the most perfect boys love that can exist. Um, Even if it's not Mm. gay everywhere, it's gay in a Mm -hmm. lot of places. Um, (laughs) It's mostly gay and... mm, It's mostly gay around here. Yeah. I mean... (laughs) There's like... There's there's one gay corner... (laughs) And everyone else has to deal with it. It's the best corner, honestly. Ugh. It's a very it messy, so messy corner. I j- with some problematic rhetoric. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. With some problematic rhetoric said about him and right. by him. Um, you know, we I think we've talked about the our dislike of the predatory gay trope. Um Yes. But in this case, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it. <laughs> like, I'm, I, I'm totally he is fine not, he is deaf. Well, you know what? Here's the thing, though. This is, this is kind of off. It's on topic, but kind of off. When we talk about representation, sometimes I think about the fact that, like, the things that we say are not good representation could totally be great representation for somebody out there. Somebody out there. No. Definitely no. identifies with Ono. Oh Somebody does, but that's not. But it's, that's not good. I didn't say it was good, but. <laughs> okay, so yeah, no, see, no. This is where I save us and hope that we get sponsors because you're doing the whole like James <laughs> Charles thing where it's okay. So no, this is where I turn into a <laughs> PR person and I save our asses. That is not okay. It is never okay to try to coerce straight men into having gay sex with you. Don't, That's don't a literal sex crime. <laughs> That's a literal Law & Order SVU <laughs> sex crime. So here's where I save the podcast. No. And that's still a it's bad still trope. Bad. <laughs> because it's bad. Yes. It's still bad. But somebody out there probably no. identifies. And that person probably <laughs> needs to get help. Probably should be in jail. <laughs> Maybe not jail. I'm not going to throw accusations again, PR person. I'm, I am I am trying so hard to save this good ship lollipop. I am doing my fucking best. Good oh lord. My. I just, I am buckets oh deep on this man. ship. Oh, um, you didn't know. See, you came into this. You didn't know. <laughs> you. I was afraid that I was going to ruin mm-hmm, your PR. Mm-hmm. By saying eat the rich and that I hate the establishment. And lo and behold, it is you who will ruin my PR by advocating for gay men lurking in the bushes, <laughs> lusting after straight men like a fucking werewolf. Like some kind of deviant homosexual werewolf. Gay! Just out, just out prowling for straight man butt. Who knew? Who knew that it was I that would be the one that would have to backpedal feverishly? Oh my gosh. So Antique... Oh god. So we've probably mentioned Antique Bakery about a thousand times, but it's uh... 
It's about a guy. His name is Tachibana. His first name is different depending on whether you watch the anime yeah. or read the manga. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Keisuke or right. Keiichiro. Why did they... So I've always known... Yeah, why? Why? Because his name doesn't matter. <laughs> his sure, first they, name I doesn't mean, matter. Yeah, Tachibana, yeah. They never refer to him by right. his first name. Um, I think it's just a dumb translation thing. I've always known him as mm-hmm, Keisuke. Mm-hmm. But Tachibana-san decides he's going to open a Western-style mm-hmm. cake shop in a very, very convoluted scheme of entrapment. Yes. <laughs> uh, he has a manservant. Um. Yeah. Basically, that's the only word I can think of. Yeah. And and he ends up hiring the guy that he homophobically bullied mm-hmm. in high school, who used to have a crush on him, as his yeah. pastier. And a delinquent former boxer who's going yes. blind. So when I say it all out loud, this sounds like an LSD fever dream. I think it might. Well, you know what? Let me not put that on her because <laughs> I doubt she does LSD. But. I. Okay. It sounds yeah. like a fever dream. I still love it. It's some of the most complex storytelling mm-hmm. that I've ever seen. Tachibana's character is great, even though, like, it's his series. It's not his series because let's be real. Everyone's yes. here for Ono. Uh. Ono is the gay of demonic charm, and he's great. Uh, no notes, except for the fact that he openly says that he's okay with being yeah, that's, abused. Um, that did bother me more than the whole, like... <laughs> so, that didn't bother me and actually led me to say one of the most problematic things I've ever said uh-huh, in my life. Which, which was? I was okay if Jean-Baptiste hit me. I was fine. I was like, I don't care if he hits me. I was, I was ready. Really, French daddy, take no. me away. See, I Jean Baptiste, Jean Baptiste Heavens clicks every box. He's a pervert. He's blonde. He's French, and he will fuck me up. <laughs> there are some problematic elements in there. Uh, I think if you haven't read it, you mm-hmm. should. Uh, there is an anime which is really, really good that I really, really like. Um. There's also some drama CDs mm. that are great. Also, and this is going to lead yeah. into piracy a little bit, uh, there are some doujins yeah. that um. Yoshinaga-sensei has done. <sighs> yeah. Which you can get legally, but not right. really. So I do have... Okay, I was, I'm not going to say who gifted this to me, um, but I did receive... The antique bakery mm-hmm. doujin. Also, I received um, some a couple of doujin from another series that I'm going to mention later. But I do have the doujin, mm-hmm. um, both volumes one and two, that was gifted to me from mm-hmm. a good friend and or by a good friend. Mm-hmm. I have not read them yet, though. I've been oh, I just oh oh, I need to though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I need to. Yes, you do. I don't. I didn't know that you had. How have you not read them? I just them? got like whenever because she sent them to me for Christmas, and when they arrived, I, f- I feel like they arrived maybe a little after Christmas. But like I was reading other things, and I wanted to get other stuff read before I sat down to read this, uh, and then I just kind of forgot. And mm-hmm. now I'm like, oh wait, I need to read these. Um, yeah, it's yeah. really good. Um. It's, I like doujins created by mm-hmm. the mangaka because they'll usually add in things that were sort of cut for time mm-hmm, in the original mm-hmm. manga. So if you read the doujin, a uh, ship sails a little bit. Yes, there is penis. I, I, I'm like, I'm so mad that I haven't read this yet. Anyway, okay, see. I'm also a little mad that you haven't read it yet. Uh, but that's Antique Bakery. I think it's great. And I think, honestly, it's Yoshinaga like at her best. I think it's her most balanced uh, the female characters aren't terrible because uh, she does sometimes fall into the trope of a woman in boys. Yeah, love is I, that's something that I've definitely noticed in some of her works, unfortunately. But uh, I, I mean, most yeah. BL has bad right. women, uh, so she's better at that. I think um, you also see a lot of older mm-hmm. women, which I think is great mm-hmm, representation, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In- including one character that is just wonderful which is sakurako everyone hates her but i think she's great um wait why do people hate her 
Because she's an old shrew who may have sexually manipulated a man who might be mentally challenged. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't know if he's all the way right. there. Uh. We never really find out. We're being veiled. You don't need to be veiled. So, Chikage is Tachibana's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. manservant, is the only nice way to put it. And he's always written as kind of, yeah, like, slow he's... and dim. But it's never labeled why right. or what. So, in fan communities and in discourse, there's always been some talk of he's maybe, like, on the autism right. spectrum or, like, if something is at play. Now, again, this is fan mm-hmm. discourse. Uh, we don't have any confirmed canon right. information from Yoshinaga Sensei. But in fan spaces, there's been a lot of talk of maybe mm-hmm, he's on mm-hmm. the spectrum. Like, maybe there's something else mm-hmm. wrong with him. So later in the series, we find out that uh, Chikage a has a daughter through uh, with this mm-hmm. woman named Sakurako. And she's... Uh, older, she smokes and she writes and I love her. Um, they have a daughter, Kaideko, who is dumb and I hate her. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's dumb and I hate her and she's a plot device. And Sakuraka, like, flat out says that she basically just, like, turkey based her yeah, with him. Yeah, oh, I do remember that. Where, like, she just used him mm-hmm. for sperm. And the way Chikage describes it, of it just being like, it felt good, but I don't really know what happened. It's like you were yeah, right. abused, it, like someone, like yes, someone manipulated it does you. Come off as very, like, like, yeah, I for, I kind of forgot about that. Like he, he does come off as very much like maybe he he's he doesn't understand a lot of things, and it makes me wonder. Like, can you can you consent? Like, no, it, like that was that was a full problem that I had because yeah. like. So, spoiler for your doujin, you get to see him and Ono do some stuff. Oh. And, like, that was a full problem that I had that I'm like, is he smart enough right. to consider? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whoa. And, like, that's that's something that I kind of grappled with. Because, like, so I, side tangent, I get a lot of flack for, um... From people saying that, like, I don't like pairings or I don't mm. like romance. And it's like, no, I just don't like characters who aren't on the same mm. level. Like, I don't like the playboy and the cinnamon roll trope because it usually means defiling the cinnamon okay. roll. Like, if you have a playboy slut boyfriend and you're a cinnamon roll, you're going to have to become a slut. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you can re-virgin a playboy. Right. You can't do that. So, like, that was my issue, like, with Yuri on Ice. That was my issue with a bunch of other series as well. That is, like, I don't like the defiling mm-hmm. of the cinnamon roll. Probably because mm-hmm. of my own mm-hmm. trauma. But, like, that was sort of my issue with Antique Bakery, too, is that you have Chikage, who is probably the purest yeah, cinnamon rolls. Yeah, he's so sweet and just innocent, which I... And does not understand yeah, what's happening. Yeah, that is true. And now that I think about it, when I was reading, when I read it the first time, it definitely did make me uncomfortable. I think this, the next time I read it, I wasn't as uncomfortable, but... I, yeah, I don't know if uncomfortable is... Like, I think it was uncomfortable, like, the first mm-hmm. time around. And I don't think it's funny now, but, like, I'm right. able to stomach it because I've read and written right. way worse. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. But, um, yeah, y'all probably weren't expecting a serious discussion right. on consent, well, were you? Cause, yeah, um, that does bring... I mean, because I did always wonder, like, is he a little, you know, like, is he able to understand what's going on? Um, right. And and that's and that's a that's a writing mm. flaw that we don't know and that he's written as so mm-hmm. dim that it's like we're concerned that he's like right. Broken. It's like is he just is like, he it's, really just dumb or does he like genuinely have like some like yeah, a problem like some learning? I don't like he just I feel he needs to be protected. Like his his cons- he needs to be protected. right. <sighs> Right, because there, there's a lot of stuff that, that uh, Yoshinaga will drop in there that it's like there's something more at play than just him being, like, mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. slow. Like, him being older than Tachibana, but, like, still, like, being, like, on the same yes. grade level, basically. Uh-huh. Like, that's okay. You don't just throw that in and, like, think that people aren't going right. to notice that. So that might be one of those, like, just weird um, 
fangirls have too much time on yeah. their hands thing so like right think about that it, stuff. maybe he is just supposed to be just kind of like a, a himbo yeah maybe he's just dumb and like, like it's a, fine yeah so could you just yeah. say himbo on this podcast i did say himbo he's not that beefy oh do himbos have to be beefy he's not muscular yeah that's the whole point that like all of their blood flow oh, goes to like keeping their pecs up he's not beefy. okay see and also Chikage's way too infantilized to be a himbo. Like he's a child basically. Ooh, yeah. Which that kind of makes that's that leads into some also creepy thing. Like cuz I don't I've always said that I'm not a big fan of like adult characters who are written as childlike in like with childlike innocence because it almost feels like they are And I know I'm sure she's not doing this. Or wasn't ha- doing this, but yeah. it just it gives me vaguely like I want to write scenes with children, but not really. So I'm going to age. Well, I mean, she kind of yeah, did. Like, so. I'm gonna make them make him look like an adult, but act like a child. You know what I mean? You know, what I mean? you know. I love that. Like I've poked a hole in yeah. this. Yeah, like that. You really burst. I mean, it's still. It's still it's really still, good. Yeah. I just feel like it's not. I just, I feel like what I don't, I want to cover our asses because what I don't want is for like comments and it's like, you didn't tell us about this. Well, no, I've told yeah, you. Yeah. I've well, told you. You know what you're getting and into. to be fair, there is a reason. I are, this Antique Bakery already isn't necessarily on my top of the list, but now I'm like, okay, I understand mm-hmm. why now. Um, and all these things are things that like, I guess they were in the back of my mind, but I didn't think about it. Until you until talking right. about it, I'm like, oh yeah, this. But I still do love it, and I still do think that um, right. it is a really good like introduction into Fumi Yoshinaga. I think that if you're gonna, yeah, I, I think, think if it you're is. gonna read something by her first, probably. Yeah. Well, I, well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm interrupting you. So yeah, continue. No, you're do fine. Do you want to go back and you're forth, fine. or do you want to list your? Do you want to... I'll, yeah, I'll go yeah. through my other two. Uh, next one up is uh, Lovers in the Night, which I really like. Set during the French Revolution. There is more hot butler stuff, because that's a thing mm. for me, apparently. And a slutty French twink. Mm-hmm. Sold. Uh, it's period piece. There's just some, some good action there. There mm-hmm. is an age gap, but everyone's consenting. <laughs> I don't think that anyone is taken against their will. Well, okay. I at the, mm. technically okay. Technically, one of the like one of the characters was um, he's a teenager that was sent or sold into sex slavery. Okay, no one that we care about in the moment <laughs> is taken against their will. Wow, <laughs> drag him. What happened? Up. What happened to Claude before he became Claude is not relevant. <laughs> it was a thing that happened, but in, in the present canon of the work, everyone is consenting. That, yes, that is, yes. Thank I, you. That is true. I just... Oh, I know. I re- <laughs> okay, so this is one that, like... Well, I'm not going to talk about... Sorry, I keep interrupting you. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. It's okay. Everything is fine. <laughs> well, because I'm going to talk about this later. So you go. I'm not going to put my two cents in <laughs> yet. You already have, but thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so Lovers in the Night is really, really good. It's also pretty short. Um, you do get a little bit of same mm-hmm. face stuff with her because it's like, that's just Dono, but all mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's like, that's dark hair Dono, but cool. Um <laughs> She gets really same face. It's so, it's, yeah, it, it's so distracting. It, she gets so same face, and it's just like that's the yeah, same character. And you definitely can't like it's. I think it's even harder if you're reading all of her works like close together. Like I would not suggest yeah. that you read that you sit down and just like binge read all of her stuff because you will get confused. It's no, everyone will melt yeah, together so, into mm-hmm, like. Mm-hmm. It's a mess, um, but it's I mean, it's good art. Mm-hmm. It's good art. I just, I mean, it ticks off a lot of boxes for me. It's French. It's slightly angsty. It's a period piece. Uh, fun fact: I'm a huge Francophile. Oh, I actually I didn't like, know that about you. 
<laughs> so, uh, in my bedroom, I have a mock copy of the key to the Bastille prison, which was given by the Marquis de Ooh. Lafayette uh, to George Washington at Mount Vernon. Oh, I did not know. <laughs> okay, sorry. I just, I'm learning things It's about okay. You. <laughs> So I, I'm a huge mm. Francophile, uh, much like Calvin Candy and Django <laughs> Unchained. Um, but my French is much better. <laughs> what? I'm just it's just funny. Is it the yeah, ja- is it the Django yes. Unchained reference? <laughs> it just threw me off. <laughs> it's my favorite movie. Um <laughs> So my last one is Oku, which is a, another period mm-hmm. piece set in Edo, yes, Japan? Yes, 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 I, yes. I remembered. <laughs> I remembered my, I remembered my <laughs> time periods. Uh, it's long. Yeah, it's currently in English, volume six. Actually, is volume 17 out yet? I don't think so. I don't it know. might be. It's long. It's not... It's not technically gay, but there is some oh, gay yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, there's definitely some gay stuff. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, there's some gay stuff. It's not I just, a big... I just think it's mm-hmm. important. I just think, I think, honestly, when when you talk about, like, criterion collections mm-hmm. of things, I think Oku's oh. on that list. Like, I... 100%. I don't know how high up it is on that list, but I think it's mm-hmm. on that list. I just, I think... Which is why I'm not going to talk about it a lot. Because I think you yeah. should read it. Like, the, the, like, like to be real, if you don't read Antique Bakery, I'm not going to lose sleep. I would like for you to. Mm-hmm, and if you mm-hmm. like it, let me know. If you read Lovers in the Night and you like it, let me know. Or if you don't like it, that's fine also. Uh, but, like, I feel like Oku is one of those things that, like, every... If you're going to call yourself a fan, you need to have read You know, I, I feel like we definitely agree on this. Because Oku... Like, I stand for Oku... I uh, people who have been watching my videos for a while or if you talk to me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you know you already know I stand for mm-hmm. this series I love it so much it was actually my intro Oku was my introduction into Fumi Yoshinaga um, mm-hmm. and that's yeah, a great it introduction. Was my introduction and I I have before like, and I've always really been into I love um, like historical Rom- historical romance, historical dramas, historical fiction. Like, I love, I love it. Mm-hmm. And I love that this has mm-hmm. a sci fi twist where I say sci fi, it's labeled as sci fi, but it has a twist of like the, the, the whole disease that she like made up. The, oh, just yes. the, the just research. Like, I stand because not only is the art stunning, but the research that she clearly did for this to be able to mm-hmm. not just write historical fiction, but to flip it a little bit, like to give a twist to it and then right. make that twist actually feel plot. Like I feel like when I'm reading it, it feels real. Like you could not tell me that these Tokugawas were not women. Like I know that they, probably, but like just, I believe if I didn't know anything about history, I could read that manga and be like, "Oh wow, this is this is real." <laughs> okay, no, 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 it's no, so good. No. Like, it is good, but don't do like, that. Don't go, don't. That's like trying to get your history lesson from Inuyasha. <laughs> but that okay, Inuyasha Stop is that. not no. But I do feel like because she did take like she took like real things from history, but then obviously took. Of course, it's fiction, so she took a lot of creative liberties, but it is, it's done in a way like where it's so well-researched that I could definitely see somebody who doesn't know anything about, like, you know, Japanese history. I could see somebody reading that and being like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, that's, a little, uh, that's concerning to me. Also, read real <laughs> books, please. I'm just... This yes, please st- read. Please, please, please read real books. Please. Oh my God. But. Uh, okay, this is where I swoop in to save the <laughs> podcast again. Also, please read real books. Um, please don't get your historical information from porn. I'm just saying that she did such a good job that if did, I didn't great. know any better, which I do, because I do read. Okay. But, but there's no guarantee that, that our readers true. know better. 
and our listeners know better, which is why I have to say, please read real books. Oh, my God. I guess I do have to think about, like, people might hear me say that and be like, oh, wait, really? But it is fiction. It is absolutely fiction. Okay. No, so there is an exact group of people. I remember I left Inglorious Bastards. Mm. And there were people that said, I can't believe that's how World War II ended. Oh, no. Th- see, that's what I'm trying to protect oh. us against. Because you have an audience and you're kind of famous and people listen to you. I am not you, famous. Just... <laughs> I can't. And people listen to you, which is why I have to swoop in and be the eat your vegetables dad. Okay. And say, you need to read real fucking books, too. You can't just get your historical information from fanciful porn written by an old Japanese woman. But it's really good and you should read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, read it, but, like, don't take a test afterwards. Right, please don't. And the... the, the yeah, like, don't, don't not right, study. And the red-faced pox is not real. Just <laughs> so you'll know. It was based off of smallpox, though, which was so impressive. Just the... In, like, the research that she did in order to make a fake freaking... I stand. I stand. I'm gonna have to dig us out of this it's grave, so... and I'm not oh looking gosh, forward it... to it. I stand. I'm, I'm gonna. Where, where's the shovel? <laughs> where is my shovel? You have to dig us out of I'm this. I'm just letting people know. Um, but I think Oku's. <laughs> okay. No, I mean Yoshinaga yes. is great. Um, so that's that's my three that I think are tops mm-hmm. for me. Um, that does not mean that there are others that I... That doesn't mean that everything else I don't mm-hmm. like. I think, as I mentioned, there's just some that kind of, like, hit differently mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. me. But now it's your okay. turn. What so, are yours? Um, I'm not going to mention Oku just because we already know. We already can. Well, no, we already know. Because there are other ones that I also okay, want fine. to mention that I really okay. do enjoy a lot um mm-hmm. i'm gonna try to stick within bl but well actually yeah i'm gonna stick because I, like i said i have all of hers in english um as far as like the non-bl oku all the way yes there's some gay stuff but it's not technically bl um i do stand for it and her other non-bl works are also um there i mean i i stand but sticking with BL, mm-hmm. um, I would mm-hmm. actually say my favorite of the. We're just gonna actually. This is no. This is in order. My top, my top favorite of her BL is um, what did you eat yesterday? I don't know why I'm holding it. Like no one else can see it but you, Amanda. But anyway. You also held it in a threatening like, way, like you were going to hit me with it. I'm going to make you read this, but no, like... Because that's actually on my list, but on the other one. No! Oh my gosh, okay, you can talk about it later. So, so what did you eat yesterday? It's a, it's basically a slice of life foodie manga centered around these two men. Um, one of them is a lawyer, I believe, and the other one is a hairdresser. And you get to see them go through life, and it's adorable. They're both over the age of 40, which is also really cool to see people a little closer to my age, you know. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just made my, like, I, I know I'm not old, but mm-hmm. I'm definitely older than You're not. these, you know barely Mm -hmm. 20 year old twinks that you see in a lot of bl (laughs) so just like Mm -hmm. so i just i love the coziness of this series i love their relationship and the realness of it um it Mm feels like their relationship feels very much like a real established relationship and i love to see it i love to Mm -hmm. see established relationships um, and then I, and the insecurities and just, oh, I love it so much. Um, and I also really enjoy the food aspect. Um, the law, lo- which I mm-hmm. cannot remember their names. I'm so bad with names, but the lawyer guy is, um, he cooks for kind of like, he loves to cook as like his rea- his relaxation kind of thing. He's really into cooking mm-hmm. and I'm really into eating. So I love to see it. 
Um, I could see people not loving this because it does get like the food part. I mean, I love it, but I could see where people would be like, "Really? We're gonna? You're giving us a whole recipe? Um, you're literally making a chapter about <laughs> them cooking?" I. I- I also mostly love that, like, I guess it's my responsibility to remember names yes, now. Yes, it is, because I don't remember. Because you don't remember names. I always names. forget their names. Um, what are the, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember it's their okay. names. you're doing fine. Oh, Shido, Everything Shido and fine. Kenji, but I don't remember which one is which, so. <laughs> so, yeah, um, anyways, I really love this. It is kind of long it's up to 14 volumes i think this yeah 14 there's probably another one out already um and volume nine is extremely hard to find i think it's volume nine i i went through hell trying to get volume nine and then finally a um a viewer hit me up and was like hey i i have this do you want it and i was like absolutely yes she gave it to me for free and everything i was so happy blessed but anyway that's this is my favorite um next on the list is ichigenme the first class of civil law this is a two volume series and it follows um again i don't remember their names but it follows a two young men who meet in college like they're going to school to be Mm -hmm. lawyers and um they meet in college or law school i guess and one of them is quote unquote straight one of them is openly gay and um, they meet in a very interesting way they meet at like um a class kind of like party thing where everyone's drinking and the old yeah a mixer mixer. and the older people like some of the teachers and older upperclassmen are basically hazing the underclassmen and kind of Mm -hmm. trying to get them to do things like take their pants off like it's weird like who does maybe there are people who do like maybe that does happen but that just so that's actually a thing that's actually a thing it's weird that's a thing. Appropriate. It's a thing. <laughs> okay, if if that's gonna be the hill you die on, <laughs> it's weird to like make pe- to force people to show their junk, like in a. It's not forcing. It's called <laughs> hazing, and everyone does hazing. it. Okay, <laughs> I hate it. But oh wow, controversial right. statement. We hate, hate hazing it. over here. But what I do really like is so like the quote unquote straight guy is. Um, about to get made to like take his pants off and he seems uncomfortable and so the openly gay man is like I'm gonna save him now he does save him by uh, giving him a we're just gonna say it's a it's a non-consensual kiss but there wasn't there was no fighting involved like old like quote unquote straight dude wasn't like oh my god get off of me he was just like oh that was weird but thanks and so they became they become friends and it, their relationship is a lot of like they are genuinely friends but also a uh, gay guy is like i actually do really like you um so you know i'm gonna be your friend and all but also i really like you and then straight guy eventually figures out that he's not actually straight he's totally gay which duh that of course that's a trope that kind of can annoy me, but in this case, I did enjoy it. I liked it. I thought it was fairly well done, considering that it is a trope that I don't love. Because I mean, come on, like, why do they okay. have to be? Can't they just all be gay and just anyway? I get it. People question their sexuality. I understand, but I just want them to be gay in my fiction. Like, I don't need real life stuff all the time in my fiction anyway so i do really enjoy this what was that journey that you just I held i don't know for? i've been doing this a lot to you oh my gosh this podcast is this is gonna be an interesting is this revenge for getting your name wrong i would never do that to you i'm not that petty <laughs> you. i love they have to outline that petty um, no, like it's so it's a trope that I'm usually not mm. crazy about, and I will say in this instance I'm mm. not crazy about it. I don't dislike mm-hmm. this one. 
Uh, but it's definitely like not one of my mm-hmm. favorites because like yeah like that's a trope that I find yeah. exhausting. Um, here's one slight ding I think for me mm-hmm. with Fumio Yoshinaga is that I feel like she has repeated the same plot every. Yeah. Episode. Okay. That is fair. Um, because yeah. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I feel like she has repeated the plot of Antique Bakery mm-hmm. in every manga. Like, <laughs> there will be, like, little differences, of course. But for the most part, there is yeah. usually um, the openly str- like really... the openly gay, you know, character who is usually yes. promiscuous or, or cheeky, yes. mischievous, all of these things. And then you have, like, the little... Yes. Straight... You, you either have, like, an actually straight character... Or you have a, a questioning character. You know, like, those are, like, kind of two things that she does sort of seem to, like, switch between. Yeah, those, those are dynamics yeah. that she really seems to mm-hmm, gravitate mm-hmm. towards. And that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think when she's not given a lot of time to go through it, like, with mm-hmm. that series, it just feels really contrived. Because yes. it's just, like, yeah, it's, like... It's so, like you're in mm-hmm. college. Like, how are you still questioning? And it's contrived that like one dude's magic kiss, like a fucking all of a sudden, oh, like, I'm oh, gay. No, now yeah. I'm gay. And I will say too that we have to also remember that these series are definitely a product of their time. Um, I feel like these days we are definitely a lot. Like when I say we, I mean manga or BL readers. We do. We are a, little, a lot more critical of certain things because you know times have changed. Like we're with the times. Like things that we are that we yeah. are things that were okay to write about or whatever at that time. Now it's like, oh, yeah. this isn't. I mean, in in well, I don't even find it offensive. Mm-hmm. From like as a queer person, that's not mm-hmm. why I find it offensive. I find it offensive of a writer because yeah, it's lazy. Right. And yeah. That too. Like I, I, I personally, I'm not triggered mm-hmm. by it as a queer person. Like as, as you mentioned with Ono, like as much as we don't like acknowledging that person in our that community, that person, person does, does exist. exist. Like that predatory gay right. is real. They're right. outside looking for you. <laughs> I mean, like, why did I just look out my window? Like, wait, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like as much as we like to distance ourselves from the predatory mm. gay, that is yeah, a they're... thing. I know some right. of them. I tell them they're wrong every time, but I know right. these people. Um, like it's just it's just a tired mm-hmm. ass trope. Like that's why I don't like that's it. Fair. I mean, it's not it's not even like I'm too woke for mm-hmm. it. I don't give a hoot and a half. I said that a fictional Frenchman <laughs> could beat me. Like I don't. Care. I'm not too woke. That is like, true and fair. It's just, yes. It's just a tired ass trope. Yes. It's just and it is. It's so. I used to be scared of the dick, and then suddenly you're gay. Like or oh, don't even get me started on the. Um, I'm actually not gay, but I do just love. I just love you, and it's like, I mean, sure, but right. Like, I mean, you can be bi or pan, but most of these people are not yeah. written as bi or pan. They're written as like straight. But I do like you though, and I don't. I. Right. Anyway, that's that tangent. So yeah, like that's that's not a bad one, but it's definitely mm-hmm. sort of just like that's a choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I feel like for me with this particular title, um, I don't I don't like that trope. But after I get past that, like once their relationship gets mm-hmm. established, I do really enjoy it. And it's only two volumes, and in the second volume, you get to see them together. Like. Their, their relationship gets established pretty quick, obviously, because it is only two volumes. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the second volume... Yeah, they have work to do. ...focuses more on them after they've been established. And I, again, I love established relationships. Um, so mm-hmm. I think that's why I rated this so high. I say rated. like I, gave, I didn't give it star ratings, but I do really enjoy this a lot because of the way things are handled sure. after that trope. Like, And there's a lot of BL sure. that it'll start out... And, it'll start out with like tropes or scenarios that I hate. But then once you get past it, it's like, okay, but I like the rest of this. Why could, why did you give us, you could have had them meet some other way, but, um, but yeah, I do really enjoy this one. And last but not least on my loves or favorites list is the moon and the sandals. Um, it is That's a good one. so good. This is one that I almost, okay. I want to say, before I explain what this is, I or what it's about, I almost didn't buy this one because I I had mm-hmm. ordered 
I had to order these through Am. I ordered these through Amazon. Um, mm-hmm. And in the description, the way it's described, it it fully made me think that this was going to be a um, teacher student romance. And so I almost didn't buy mm-hmm. it. But then I read a review, and then in the review they said, "Please know that this that the description is not that it's not accurate." Like, this is not about a student-teacher mm-hmm. relationship, like, a, a, a sexual mm-hmm. relationship or whatever. Um, and so I was like, mm-hmm. okay. So I went ahead, and I got it, and I freaking love it. This is another two-volume series, and it um, it follows several people. The main, I would say the main perspectives we get are, um, and again, you already know that I don't know names, but you, get a, you have a high school student who is... Um, I think he knows he's gay or he's questioning. I can't quite remember, but he's at an appropriate age to be like unsure or whatever. I think he does know he's gay. And um, he does have a little crush on his um, teacher who is also mm-hmm. gay. Um, and it kind of brings up this, this, this situation of like when you are a gay teen, excuse me, teen, and you don't have people around you to really talk to, you do kind of, you probably do latch on to the one person that you do know is gay. And the, for him, this was his teacher. And so he, I mean, he latched on to him and he definitely had a crush on him. Um, and he does form, like, there is a relationship that's formed, but it's because the teacher, he's so wholesome and sweet and he's just trying to help this kid out um but then the kid ends up like trying to kiss him and the teacher's like wait a minute oh no like oh no what's happening um but instead of like freaking out and just being like horrible to him he's like okay wait a minute i know what this is like he's he's confused and he needs like guidance and so he ends up becoming more of a mentor to him and I love it. He put mm-hmm. he nips it in the bud. There is no student teacher relationship that they do form a friendship, an appropriate friendship. Mm-hmm. It's there's nothing weird. Um, but then also while you're getting that story, you're getting the teacher's story um, about his relationship and um, his partner is. I think he works at a bakery, which yeah, it doesn't surprise me because Fumi Yoshinaga loves food. Um, so yes, she does. So I think he works at a bakery or something like that. Um, and while the teacher is out, I think the teacher's out, but the but his partner isn't. I think that's what it is, if I remember correctly. It's been a little bit since I read it, and so there's conflict there. They live together, but they had to, um, in order to be on each other's like. In order to basically technically be quote unquote married, they had to adopt each other. Like one of them had to adopt the other one because, mar- you know, gay marriage is not, or at, th- at least at the time, it's not, it wasn't legal. I'm sure it probably still isn't. But there's just so many things that happen in this that I think as much as Fumi Yoshinaga has taken ridiculous liberties with a lot of her other BO. This one is probably her most earnest, in my opinion. Like, it feels the most, um, yes, the most grounded, the most genuine, and the the one that, like, if I wanted someone to read a BL that is somewhat educational, somewhat educational, this is not a bad one. It's, I mean, again, it's not perfect, at all because she is a straight woman (laughs) writing you know the perspective of a a perspective that she doesn't really fully understand but i do think that she put in effort it seems like she put in effort to do some actual research instead of just like let's let's make the you know let's make these two men just fuck or whatever like they do a lot but their their relationship feels like an actual relationship and they're dealing with things that are genuine things that um gay couples have had to deal with um 
And then mm-hmm. also gay teens, you know, learning their way. And you you also get more of the teenager's story and his relationships. And it's just really, really good. And I would have loved for this to be longer. Because mm-hmm. um, I absolutely, I adore this. And now that I'm talking about it, I actually want to reread it. Because mm-hmm. it's really good. It is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Um, I think that she works better with short series. Mm. I think that she does tend to go a little bit off the rails mm-hmm. if you give her too much space. I mean, like, realistically, any right, writer right. does. Like, I don't I don't say that, like, I am anyone to judge because I have a series that went on. I started mm-hmm. it when I was in high school and I finished it three mm-hmm. years ago. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm a bad writer. Because <laughs> um, I'm a bad writer. No, maybe you just really loved the series. I had an interlude where I stopped mm. working on it because uh, my muse left oh, me. Okay. So I was depressed and emo. I mean, for a understandable. While. And then I returned to it out of spite. <laughs> also understandable. <laughs> yeah, and then I returned to it out of spite. Um, but those are good. Yeah, those are, those I really are good enjoy ones. all of those. So I guess we're gonna yeah segue into our least favorite, so we can basically talk shit about each other's um, picks. A couple of them. I'm only going to talk shit about one of your favorite favorites. <laughs> so I I didn't add a third, but I was reminded that actually, <laughs> what did you eat yesterday was not one of my favorites, mm-hmm. just because I just think it's 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 mm-hmm. slow for me, and I think that that dynamic again is done in mm-hmm. other series better. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very Antique Bakery light uh-huh. for me. Okay. And it feels like, so, like, Antique Bakery has recipes and stuff yeah, like that. But that feels like a fun treat after a lot of plot. Mm-hmm. And what did you eat yesterday? The recipe feels like it, it is, is the plot. Because it is. <laughs> because it basically Yeah, so, like, is. there's not a lot of, yeah. So, it's not, there's not, to me, there's not enough stuff happening mm-hmm. around it for me to mm-hmm. care and it's so long. Yeah. Like, if this was a one-shot, if this was, like, or even just, like, an omake, like, a mm-hmm, four mm-hmm. coma, like, that'd be great. But, like, the fact that somehow she's managed to milk this much out of this couple who does nothing. I th- it, it's definitely, it appeals to a very specific, because, <laughs> like, um, which is something that's probably people have maybe noticed over time with watching me listening to me talk about manga i have a very huge place in my heart for boring slice of life or just like mundane slice of life i don't know what it is i i'm i think i'm just a very curious person like when i say curious i mean like i'm curious about what other people are doing and this gives me kind of like it's like voyeur i i'm i think i'm a voyeur like because i love I yeah, love probably. that, like, kind of fly on the wall, like, watching other people, no. um, like, just what they're doing in their their day-to-day life. No. I love that. I, I think it's bo- – I, I would rather yeah. watch paint dry. I think it's the boringest <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's incredibly boring. You, like, I – You definitely give me, like, like – action but like you like plot you need a plot you need something kind of driving you forward i need plot. you know whereas me i'm just like i can just sit here and just read literally just read something where people they're not doing shit they're just cooking okay you know what i i do like, like i mean i love hitalia hitalia mm-hmm. has nothing mm-hmm. going on but there's so much character mm-hmm. stuff that it's okay that nothing is mm-hmm. going on because in that five minutes you've learned so much about everyone mm-hmm. else but it doesn't matter that the plot hasn't mm-hmm, advanced. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're going to be a dumb, slow slice of life, <laughs> there has to be, like, a condensed level of shit mm-hmm, happening mm-hmm. for me to get into right. it. Like, I think the la- like some of the last slice of life that I've been driving, I like Cheese Sweet Home, uh-huh. which is about a cat. Yeah. And it made me cry when I was in, it made me cry when oh, I was in college. I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I know. Surprise. I miss... I missed my mom because, oh. like, it, early in the early in the anime, she is separated from oh, her mother, no. and she's taken in by this human family, and it's just like her screaming, oh, no. like, "Mom, I miss you!" And I was like, "I miss oh. my Bob." Oh, that would make me cry. I couldn't. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I cried. I cried in my dorm uh, by myself oh. in college. 
Um, but yeah, I, I don't usually mm-hmm. slice of life very much. It's because like, I think mm-hmm. it's boring. Like I just, you're, yeah, that's not why. But you're not alone. A lot of people, like a lot of people don't like it. And I mean, there are people that love slice of life that get so offended when people are like, yeah, I don't really like it. But yeah. I don't get offended because I'm just like, I know. Like, I know it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I know. Right. Well, and I, and I don't know if, like, boring is the point. Like, mm. it's meant because, like, I have a friend. Like, actually, it's mm. my best friend. We're polar opposites in anime taste. Like, I'm 100% like mm-hmm. shonen. And he is like, how do I get the boringest show about girls doing mm-hmm. nothing? Just... And, like, that's the two ways that we've coped with mm-hmm. our lives is like, I need that hyper competent shonen mm-hmm. male hero. Not as much anymore of, like, the new shonens because they're boring and mm. all the same. But, like, during, like, my formative anime years, like, your Naruto's, your Full Metal mm. Alchemist, Bleach. Like, that was, like, that's what I needed. I needed that escapism because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't want to face my problems. I wanted to be the hyper-competent leading right. male. So I didn't want to watch dumb girls doing dumb things because I am a dumb girl <laughs> doing dumb things. Like, I don't want to. You're like, no. I had that. Too close. <laughs> Right, like I, I don't, I don't need, uh, I don't need to watch an anime about a girl running a club. I am a girl running a club. <laughs> like I'm already doing that. So that's actually on my list. I was going to not mention it, but I'm like, I, 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 I mean, like it's that fair. One. I have two volumes it's of fair. it. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. fine. It's not. And I think like that's a caveat that we need to bring mm-hmm. up. If you like any of these, that's great. Oh, and we're yeah. not judging you. And when it comes to someone like Yoshinaga Sensei, bad doesn't. Us not liking it doesn't mean right, bad. Right, not at all. They're still yeah. great. It's just, it didn't do it for us. Which I think leads us into what I think is her most popular and my least favorite, which is Truly Kindly. This is It's her most popular? I think it's one of her most popular. I know a lot of people who like Truly Kindly, and I could not tell you why it so monumentally turned me off, but um. it did. <laughs> I because this is it's also this is also on my list. Um, so I made t- yeah. As far as like the things that I don't like, because I did not I I didn't love truly kindly. Um, I mean the first the first story that it opens up with tripped me the fuck out. Like it made me wonder like what yes. was going on in her brain because it's literally a story about. A very, very, the, 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 someone who clearly has a lot, has gone through a lot of trauma. Someone who, someone who definitely has a lot of trauma and. And Yoshinaga seems to like Yeah, the, the, I mean, it's literally, it opens up with someone possibly killing his lover string or not love wait are they lovers i can't it's been so it's been a little bit oh shit oh my god i just (laughs) my husband just walked past my window and i saw out of the corner of my eye but i didn't see who it was it's the predatory gay we got him (laughs) it's the predatory gay i told you they were coming to get us (laughs) i'm gonna start calling him predatory gay i'm changing his and his name in my phone to predatory gay (laughs) Why is he outside? No, he's so creepy. You, you're, you're married. Why, why, why is he banished no, outside? It's raining. I don't know what the heck he was doing. Oh my gosh, that scared why? me. Oh that. Oh my. Anyway, God. uh, go get your man. Why is he outside? I don't know what the heck. I don't know. Anyway, oh so basically, God. the fir- it opens up with the story that's super disturbing. A lot of like non-consent a lot of like i think one of the characters in like killed his mother like it's just it's a mess and i love and it's a and it's a mess without end yes i think is my problem with it because like i i love i do too but i love it but like it just seems so unnecessarily messy and we don't get to spend enough time mm -hmm, with these mm -hmm. characters to care yes you just hit the nail on the head because it's like Okay, I get that this is supposed to be, like, a story. Like, it's supposed to be a messed up story. And I also do love mess. But this story just did not... Like, it just... Maybe if she had had a little bit more time to, like, give us more... Like like you said, I didn't care. Like, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? I don't... Or it wasn't enough to shock me. Because, like, there was a... 
I think it's a baby bitch. I don't know who the mm. mangaka was for it, but it's like a series of vignettes, and like all of them are mm-hmm. horrible, except for a few. But like most of the vignettes are mm-hmm. horrible, including a guy who murders a bunch of dudes because they were like molesting a priest. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's like no. messed up, but like it's written and paced in mm-hmm. such a way that like like it like I gasped. I was like, oh shit! Like I was right. like. It's so like even though it's a short vignette and you don't spend a lot of time right. with these characters, it's like oh shit, <laughs> like, like right. he did <laughs> like that. But truly, kindly mm-hmm. doesn't have that. It doesn't have. Uh, it just didn't do mm-hmm. it for me. Again, like if that's your thing, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. It just didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't it for me. Yeah. Uh, Ger- Gerard and Jacques is also in that same category, which is uh, more angry Frenchmen. I didn't like that one. Uh, just read Lovers in yeah. the Night. Just read that this is, one. This is like, where just... they first get um, introduced, right? That's why people... Yeah, yeah. but like... Yeah, but it's yeah. bad. I just... I didn't... I Yeah, I just didn't love this. And I, I don't mind that I have it. I don't mind that I own it. And it is something that I could see myself... I could see myself going back to this just because I mean it's a it's it's a one volume, you know. So like maybe I might it might pique my curiosity. Hold on. Oh. Two. Oh, is it two? Oh. Yeah. Truly kind. <laughs> well, do I have the other one? Well, true. Truly kindly is one. Gerard oh, yeah, and yeah. Jacques Gerard is two. Gerard and Jacques. That one is two, and that one. Just read Lovers in the Night. Like, just read that one. Just. Yeah. Like, it's fine. It's fine. But just read Lovers in the Night. It's better. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, I, I, I just, I feel like for her, like, in her long career, she's definitely recycled a lot of plots. Mm-hmm. And a lot of characters do mm-hmm. blend together and a lot of motivations blend together. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, like, it's not that any of this is bad. It's just there's better examples of this plot right. thread. Like, there's better examples of what she's trying right. to accomplish i think in other right. works um, i mean and but that's just yeah, my opinion and honestly like not to talk about capitalism again but because i feel like because you know if you are a mangaka you know and you want to actually make a living i i can see how easy it would be to kind of get stuck in writing basically the same thing over because you're just like you know what i gotta make well i don't I don't know if it's mm. capitalism or I don't know if that's just her. That could like, also, I don't, yeah. I don't, like, I think it's just her. Because, like, after a certain, so, um, so one thing I'm obsessed mm-hmm. with as a writer is called, like, writer's bingo. Mm. So, like, you can tell that this is a work by this mm-hmm. person because it ticks off right, these boxes. Right. So, like, my, so, like, if you read any of my fiction, which most of you haven't because I've not published fiction in, like, ten <laughs> years. Um, but when I was writing fiction, like, things, if you did not know that this was published mm-hmm. by me, but it checks off these mm-hmm, items. Mm-hmm. It's probably by me. So, like for mine, mine was um, unreliable mm-hmm. narrators, um, first person limited POV, mm-hmm. or third person mm-hmm. omniscient. Because I don't fuck with like, I don't fuck with POVs very mm-hmm, often. Mm-hmm. Um, angst, heavy angst, mm-hmm. and then uh, sex intrigue <laughs> because I like to break up tension with sex. Like, just like in my real life. Um, so, like, if you found... There was also one that was, like, it hit too close to home. And it was, like, protagonist with a long fringe. And it's, like, fuck you. <laughs> but, yes. I love a fringe on a protagonist. And I didn't realize, like, so many of my protagonists had that until I was, like, ah, oh, god damn it. All of you look the same. <laughs> all, all, all of you are the same character in different ways. Fuck. <laughs> But that one has glasses. It's <laughs> different. <laughs> it's different. You're different. Um, but, like, I think that's just in her bag of tricks. Yeah. And, like, that's fine. It's fine. Mm. I just think that, like, because it's in her bag of tricks, there's some that do it better than others. Because, yeah. like, you see her coming to these themes a lot. I think maybe because we did kind of jump the gun with why mm-hmm. we stand, I think it's a good time to mention that I think she definitely has some themes that she goes mm-hmm, back mm-hmm. to, which... Um, we'll go into a little bit more after you talk about your three oh, that you yeah. didn't like as much. Which I, are, are they all the same, or did um, I? <laughs> okay, so 
actually, there's one that I don't like that you didn't mention, and that is Soulfage. Um, okay, if I'm so that one was just boring. You thought it was boring. Yeah, I did. So I didn't think it was boring per se. I actually think that it had. This is one of those that like. The main reason I don't like it is because um, the the main couple, part of the couple is a very young boy. Like, I think, how old is he in the beginning? I want to say, he's definitely a minor. He's definitely a minor, and he ends up um, in a relationship with his piano teacher. And I know that, I'm pretty sure that technically... He's not like a teacher at the school, but it's still inappropriate because there's a grown man with a literal mind. Like when I say minor, like not like 17, about to turn 18, but like 15, I want to say. Um, and then there's like a weird like living together kind of like it's just it's messy and I love mess, but I did not like the the age gap. Um, it does get hit. Yeah. I will say that it definitely does get addressed. There are people like the um, the teacher does not. He he definitely ends up. I guess you could. I guess punished is the. I can't think of a better word, but there are consequences. That's what I'm trying to say. There are consequences to the decisions that he makes regarding this child, and I do appreciate that. Um, I just didn't love this, but I, I don't think that it was, I don't think it's like, it's not written badly and she's not framing this character as someone that you're supposed to like. And it is very, it's made very clear through other characters and how they react that it's sure. not like she's in no way saying like, Hey, this relationship is great. You should do this kids. Sure. Um, and I do appreciate that, but it just, for me, it's hard. It was hard for me. It's hard for me to say that I love it just because the subject matter is. Um, it's just I, I'm very sensitive when it comes to, you know, yeah. um, situations with like children and adults, like sexual relate, like the manipulation. Because sure. also, like, there's just a power dynamic. Um, if I if I remember correctly, the teacher was also like either paying for his lessons or like giving him lessons for free because he is like the kid is he has a, his mom is single and doesn't have a lot of money so there's just a lot of things that make it easy for this kid to be manipulated and you know and, sure. and consent so that was but i'm not say, saying that other people should not read this it's just not my favorite if that makes sense yeah, and so so here's where, and I hope this doesn't sound mm -hmm. mean. If you're less sensitive mm -hmm, to that, mm -hmm. then it's fine. Yeah, like I, I am a deviant, and I don't have mm -hmm, problems mm -hmm, with that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So for me, it was just mostly boring. Right. Like it was just sort of like whatever, because mm -hmm. I read age gap stuff mm -hmm. all the time. Like I've read way more problematic right. stuff with way less good framing. Right. Like if anything, like. All of that was mm -hmm. fine. It was just, to me, it was a little... It didn't go far enough, uh, I guess. I can see that. Yeah, because, I mean, it doesn't get too... It doesn't get, like, wild. It's a pretty softball. Yeah, it doesn't get, like, wild. Like, and not even wild. Just, like, yes, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're going to say consequences, that is not a consequence. Well, he does get, he does get like, beaten up. He gets beaten up by, one, by another teacher... Um, or another music teacher and he also eventually gets stabbed but i forget why he gets stabbed it has nothing to do with the kid i don't think I, yeah the stabbing's unreal okay so he gets beaten up for what is a literal crime like that's yeah. nothing like that's what i mean right. like it's like if you're gonna like if you're gonna say he faces consequences people have argued over pizza yeah. like no like calm down like that's not a consequence like yeah okay true he doesn't go to prison or anything i guess i mean i, and I don't and, I, and not to say that and, and this is slippery slope for me because again like i usually don't care mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. that stuff like it just to me like if if that's the concern like no like it, he doesn't have a consequence mm. for it like he he does still get off pretty yeah. easy like 
Like, if, if that's the concern, which, I again, like, I, I think is fair mm-hmm. and valid, and I respect that. Like, for me, it was just either you need to take it farther and have it be either messier or more mm-hmm. dramatic, or you need to just gloss over it and let people either deal with it or not. Yeah, that's fair. Because I've because I've read I've read plenty of series where it's like here's a student mm-hmm. and a teacher and either we're just gonna not talk about it at all and don't worry about it or we're really going to take a grounded serious mm-hmm. approach and we're like he told me my hero did that where it's like we're going to take a serious and grounded mm-hmm. approach to why it's okay or not okay for me as your teacher to be dating you mm-hmm. my student like so, or yeah like you can just gloss over and be like fuck it that's right. happening <laughs> like yeah. It's happening. Okay. Sure. Right. And to be honest, like, like I'm, I'm not super triggered by that mm-hmm. in fiction. I never mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. have been, which is one of the reasons I find it so funny when, like, aunties are all like, this is, like, actual pedophilia. <laughs> it's like, okay, y'all need to calm down. <laughs> y'all, y'all need to relax. Right. You kids, you kids have too much time right. on I mean, hands. that's why I, I'm very, because I try, I don't ever want to shame someone for what they enjoy in fiction. And I try to make it clear that, like, it's my own personal trigger. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because of, yeah. my, and I don't talk about, I don't like to talk about my real life sometimes because, oof. But, like, yeah. because of my own personal traumas, it is something that does mm-hmm. trigger me. So I try to let people know, sure. like, hey, just because I am triggered yeah. by it does not mean that you also have to be triggered by it. You can totally. And at, yeah. Hmm? And at the hmm. same time, for me, it means that I have to be sensitive to it. Because, like, even though it doesn't bother me, hmm. like, that doesn't mean that, like, I get to say, like, well, your point's invalid. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> which I would never do. No, I was like, like, I don't think you would ever. You've never done it to me. No. <laughs> no. No, I never would. I, because, like, I mean, I, I have my own trauma mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's just, I don't, I don't care about it yeah. enough to. Yeah, like, you're just like, it's fiction. Like, I'm fine yeah. with that kind of stuff. Like, it's, yeah, it's a thing. Like, oh, that's happening. Right. All right. That's weird and problematic, but like, sure. Okay. I mean, and so, yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> Soulfage, to me, it was, it, it was interesting in that it's super messy and I love mess. But I was just like, yeah, it's not a favorite because mm-hmm. I didn't like. I, I didn't like that relationship. I just, if it was so, it felt yeah. icky and I'm usually entertained by ickiness, but that was just ickiness that I didn't like. Um, sure. And you're yeah. entitled to that. I'm trying to think of what else, what else did I say? Is that, what else did I say I didn't like? I think the other two, I think we pretty much yeah. agree on that. We're not crazy about um, Truly yeah, Kindly. Truly We're not crazy kindly about. Truly Kindly and, um, oh, I didn't like um was it lovers in the, no i think it was gerard and jacques that i didn't love um and i think it's because okay, so. um well oh yeah it is gerard and jacques because my first of all my copies like the mm-hmm. second vo- one of the volumes i think the second volume is a has, is, was like misprinted and so like a lot of the pages mm-hmm. are out of order so when i was reading it i was mm-hmm. super confused and then i found out that there mm-hmm. are there were there were some um volumes that were misprinted and they were like out of order mm-hmm. so i was super confused mm-hmm. also um what did i not like what was it that i didn't um, there was something else that I didn't like about it, but mostly I was just super confused because of the misprint. Um, and I think mm-hmm. I didn't like, cause I feel like Gerard and Jacques, is that the, that's the one where the, is, which one of them, isn't one of them a prostitute in the beginning? Yes. Um, and he's like young and I, th- and yes. I think I just didn't, I didn't like that specific part of it because i'm like really like i get it that that's probably historically i hate feeling like such a deviant because like i don't care but i'm a i'm a furry so i mean (laughs) yeah you don't get to judge me for anything like it's so because like i i'm used to feeling like the deviant in any given Mm. room but like i'm not used to feeling like this dead about stuff because i don't care i mean but that's fine though like if it doesn't like it's seriously because it's again it is fiction it just for me i was just yeah. like uh i don't like it like i guess for me like, like i don't care that he was a prostitute but i kind of just wish that they didn't i wish that she didn't like depict it i think that's kind of where my because 
like he is a like I get that it's historically accurate. I just don't I don't like it when young characters um when it's depicted like when it's showing them being like basically I mean it's rape whether you cuz they're kids they can't consent. So um it's just the like actually sh- like drawing it out is bothersome because I'm like, dang, you had to draw it. You could have just like told. So that's that. why you could stomach antique bakery. Yeah, probably. Yeah, be- yeah. That's okay. probably why because because antique bakery never. Yeah, it's, it's never. Well, and again, depending on which version you consume, because mm. the anime tries to leave it very vague. Mm-hmm. And the manga more the, explicitly says what Yeah, the what manga was done. Ta- definitely tells us what happened, but it's never. Um, she never drew it. I don't think. Like. Yeah, but like that might be then. The, yeah. That might be the reason why you can right. stomach. Because I was say like if that's such a thing, yeah, be like she never. Like, yeah, that and it that's out. yeah, I, I, and that's my big because I realize like things like traumatic things happen to you know kids I, I was a kid who had you know a lot of traumatic things like things that cause a lot of trauma happened to me but it's more so like when they choose to actually like, I guess I just in my head I'm like why do you choose to draw it out you know like I because it increases the ability to empathize with that mm. act so like Maki Murakami does that in uh, the gravitation mega mixes mm-hmm. because Yuki Airy is a victim of child mm-hmm. sexual abuse and in one of the mega mixes like she draws mm-hmm. it out and everyone like gave her shit it's like why did you mm-hmm. do that it's like because now you know mm-hmm. yeah I guess like now you know the pain that yeah. he went through and that it was because it's one thing to just hear it to just hear him say that he was abused right. it's another thing to see like oh shit you were abused yeah and I <laughs> like, guess that's where I because because you know, bec- again, because of my past. Like, for me, I'm just like, mm, I don't need to see sure. it. <laughs> like, you know what I'm like? So yeah, I know. And that goes back to one of our episodes when we talked about, you know, things like this. And it still does not mean that... I, I still wouldn't call it problematic. I'm using air quotes because that's not mm-hmm. fair. It's just a thing that I don't like. But it, somebody else might read it and actually get that and, and be like, oh, wow, okay now i see whereas me i'm like i already know i don't need <laughs> i don't need to see it so it's just a that it just comes down to like what you know like but what your tolerance is you know and i mean you don't know yeah. what your tolerance is until you read it so i mean this is know, true like, you you can't you <laughs> so read it and then if you decide that you don't mesh with it then that's okay you can like give it away or something like it's not you know like it's 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 not that serious and but yeah for me Gerard and Jacques I just it wasn't my favorite but again like we said earlier even the ones that aren't our favorite there's still like something about them that's worth reading like I don't regret reading because I've read all of the all of um all of what I own except for the doujin I have read by her and um I don't think I've ever just sat down and, like, regretted reading any of her stuff. I may not, like, see myself returning to some of them. Um, like... I think I regretted... I think I regretted Truly Kindly. Really? Oh. I think so. Okay, okay. It just didn't... I think that's it, Mm -hmm. though. Like, I think everything else has been, like, on the continuum of, like, this is fine Mm -hmm. or this is this other series Mm -hmm. light. But like I think I think truly kindly was the one that it's like I could take this yeah. back. <laughs> You're like I'm gonna return this. Um, and I haven't. It's still on the shelf. But like it's like I could. I'm yeah, good. I mean, I'm good. it's that you kind of when you decide to read the all of or at least the majority of um, uh, one mangaka's work, you are definitely mm-hmm. going to. At least this has been my experience, not just with Fumi Yoshinaga, but also with Clamp. There's a point where you do mm-hmm. kind of become. How do how do I say this? Um, as you you can still stand, but you begin to see, you you're able to see their works through a less through without the rose colored glasses, I guess. You know, so right, and I, I, I think that that's important to hallmark mm-hmm. on because that's something that I'm big on. I know you mm-hmm. are as well. 
that just because we love it doesn't mean that it's not without yes Mm -hmm. and as much as we've both given yoshinaga sensei a Mm -hmm. lot of praise like there's a lot of her work that is flat out Mm -hmm. problematic is like it's weird Mm -hmm, and crazy mm -hmm. and wrong sometimes Mm -hmm. but you know also i love it and you can't take this right. away from yeah. me yeah <laughs> i mean that's basically that's how i feel i mean heck one of my other yeah. favorite non bl series by her is um oh crap it is oh the flower of life it's a four volume series apparently mm-hmm. volume 4 is super hard to find i got really lucky i didn't realize that it was hard mm-hmm. to find but um it's a series it's it's about this boy who um, has re- he had cancer and he's in remission but well yeah I, I get we'll say remission um but he gets to go back to school and and so mm-hmm. it's him sort of like navigating being back in school after being out for like a year or two something like for a while he was out for a long time and um mm-hmm. it's so good like he it's him like kind of learning to live life and make he's making friends and um, mm-hmm. There, there was like a vaguely, a vaguely gay plot, like or a, a vaguely, vaguely gay couple, but they're not. I mean, he, I thought he was gonna be gay with his close friend. Um, I shipped them, but it didn't, it didn't happen because it was, it's not a BL. It wasn't really about, um, it's not a romance. It's a just, it's a, it's about life. It's about this kids kind of life and he ends up becoming mm-hmm. like um like a manga co- like it's so it's so good and so cute but there is a character in the, in this story he's a side character who ends up and mind you these kids are like very like 15 and um mm-hmm. one of the characters ends up in a sexual relationship with their teacher their female teacher which is interesting because you mm-hmm. don't really usually when you see teacher student relationships is usually a, a, a male teacher and a girl um or a guy <laughs> but this time it's antique bakery did it oh wait did they constance <gasps> with um oh, with AG. oh i forgot oh i forgot yeah. about that I mean, AG's an adult, but, like, Constance is, like, 20, 20 yeah. years older than him. Oh, I totally forgot. I didn't. <laughs> I need to reread it, because I forgot. But, yeah, Flower of Life, that's what they, they do that. And so, um, but and it was very, I do feel like it was handled in a way that, um, again, the framing made me, like, I didn't love their relationship, and I did not love that. I did not like the teacher's choices. But again, it was framed in a way where I was like, yeah, we're not supposed to like this. We're not supposed to think it's, you know, okay. She definitely knows that it's not okay, but she's still doing it. Cause she's, she got issues. It was just, it was a very, it's a very interesting story. And I do really, you know, I, I do enjoy it. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't where I don't remember what my train of thought was. <laughs> We've been talking so. So long. let's wrap up and talk about some themes that seem to be common in Yoshinaga Sensei's yes. work, and then um, which I think we have to talk about trauma because it seems yeah, like that's it a thing is. That she almost almost gets mm-hmm, off on mm-hmm. a little bit. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> she she likes she likes the trauma. Uh, the younger the better, apparently. Yes. She like she likes it. Uh, your mileage on that can vary. Personally, mm. for me, I'm pretty ambivalent. But again, no tea, no shade if it doesn't do it mm-hmm. for you. Uh, she also really does seem to like that trope, again, like of one straight, mm-hmm. one gay. Mm-hmm. She really likes that. Uh, bonus points if the gay is a little bit predatory or promiscuous. Yes. She really, really likes yeah. that. Uh, you can see that almost all of her works that the gay is usually a little bit promiscuous mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the straight is kind of like the fuddy-duddy mm-hmm. which I think is kind of fascinating because it makes que- it makes queerdom this like magical loose lifestyle yeah, when it's, it's not like yeah like I don't it's like the whole like magical black person yes. thing but like oh to like it, it make it's like the whole like magic twink I don't really right. like that um, but again like I don't care most mm-hmm. of the time it's just 
it's it's a it's a thread that you notice she really likes food of all yes she loves food which is one of my favorite things about her i love that she loves food because i also love food um i mean i did i did read her one shot um not love but delicious foods makes me happy Mm -hmm. and i loved it um and it's, it's it's literally a directory of different restaurants mm-hmm. in Japan. Like it's her, it's, I love it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. And I think the other big thing that she really likes is I. Everything with her just seems like it's always tinged with this like little bit of sadness. Mm-hmm. Like even happy endings are just like very somber Mm -hmm. and i like that about her because fun fact with my trauma i'm very skeptical about happy Mm -hmm. endings Mm -hmm. i don't really like romance because to me i find it so impractical Mm -hmm. that like just no one has any problems no one argues everything is fine the dick solves all your all Mm -hmm. your problems like i don't like Mm -hmm. that um so i like that all of her stories have this tinge of melancholy mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. them that even the ones that are boring or <laughs> a little bit slower there's always this little just like not everything is okay right. but not in a contrived way because i feel like a lot of authors do that but it's just like super contrived mm-hmm. and dumb it's like well why 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 did you have to throw in a sexual assault like it's a seasoning mm-hmm. but like for her there's usually usually more intentionality mm-hmm. to it um that it tends to I don't want to say it humanizes these characters, mm. but it just gives them, like, an added level of something. So, like, for me, the pinnacle of that's, like, Tachibana and Auntie mm-hmm. Bakery, where, like, we don't need to know that he's a survivor of mm-hmm. trauma. But when we see all these little moments of him being kind or being strong or being unstable, it just makes him a richer mm-hmm. character. He would have been fine without it. Right. He's a fine character on his own without the trauma. But then you add the trauma and it's like, oh, shit. Right. (laughs) You're doing all this with all that? Mm -hmm. So those are some themes that you can look out for when you're reading a uh, Fumi Yoshinaga. We already talked about why we stand. That's what we've been doing for the past two hours. This whole episode (laughs) is us standing. Watch the Antique Bakery anime. Like, I think it's phenomenal. I still haven't. And I don't think it gets enough credit. Me too fucking how I, I i know i know i think the i think the anime is absolutely okay phenomenal. i'm gonna have to i will watch it i wonder if i can get it on you have to i think you mm, we'll have to yeah, see how is it's it on available Prime? we'll yeah. see because because i ain't no you already know our matey ain't coming out my mouth <laughs> But it'll come out of mine. <laughs> so if you happen to procure it, <laughs> I suggest that you don't ask questions. Okay. If, 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 a, if, a, if a nondescript DVD shows arrives, up on my doorstep, <laughs> if it shows up with more I of those just, chips that you would I just won't ask them. questions, especially if you send me them chips, because mm-hmm. those were so. Well, I'm gonna put it in the chips. Listen, I'm gonna put it in the back. Like, chips. put it. Listen, that okay? Don't do that to me. Don't. Because I'll be real sad. I'll open that bag and I'm like, but where are the chips? <laughs> no, I'm still going to put the chips oh, in there. I'm not oh, going to. Okay. <laughs> you, you fatty. <laughs> <laughs> but, where's, but where are the chips? But where are the chips? Fatty. I love chips. I okay. <laughs> I, I'm done with you. I quit. <laughs> you did not just say, where are the chips? Like, I'm going to throw, like, like, I'm going to throw the chips out. <laughs> Those are $3 a bag, ma'am. Not throwing the chips out. Dang, that actually makes you three dollars. I look like when I tell you I ate that whole bag in like five <laughs> minutes. Three. Yeah, I think it was like, I think it was like two sixty or two ninety. That's expensive for. See, I am. I need to really work on my snack. Like snacking. <laughs> that's where all my money goes. To, is snacks. I need to pull back. <laughs> snacks. So I had fun. Yeah. Uh, where 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 can people find where can people find um, us? Well, okay, you can find me on the internet at Mama Loves Manga. Just just just, just hanging out. I mean, just, just literally like because it's just, I'm Mama Loves Manga 
everywhere. Probably also on OnlyFans one day. <laughs> Catfishing people using my cleavage. That is actually brilliant. I, I We mentioned that during our Hangout oh, Live. Oh, we did. And you, yeah, so. Just saying. Why is it, why is it my job to remember um, things? I'm not going to say on, on this podcast why I have memory problems, but. That's fair. <laughs> I'm okay with being the brain cell. <laughs> uh, you can find me most places at Aichi mm-hmm. Yume, and you can find my blog um, at amandaactually.wordpress.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, good yeah, night, good everyone. night. We we appreciate y'all uh, for being whenever, here. Yeah, when, whenever the hell you're listening to this, this is going to come out in like five yeah. weeks. I, I honestly... <laughs> Uh, we we appreciate y'all okay yeah bye yeah we appreciate you guys bye (laughs) 